So we do a lot of adding of, um, of organic material to the soils here, trying to build up the organic content. I know at Barring L we've done now three years of, um, of adding organic material, we're up to 2 to 3%, which is quite high for, uh, for any sandy soil. Um, but yeah, as soon as we increase the organic material in the sandy soil, we also increase the ability to hold water. Um, so what's happening now currently in the valley, which is going to be interesting to see, lots of guys are switching from, we're also switching from over it to drip irrigation. And that's going to be very interesting and something that's going to um, give you more control, but you have to have a good look at it. As soon as you switch, everything's been overhead, so we have a big development of roots all across here. And as soon as you switch to drip, what you're doing, you're limiting the water. And in the sandy soil, we get a straight down profile, so we're actually pulling the roots back. So I think a combination of the two in the transition period might be very important. Very and we'll have a look at that, so um, that's going to be interesting. It's Hi. easier, drip irrigation on that side would be much easier because you have to play soils, so you have a bit of a fanning out of the water, you get a bit of a bold profile. So on, on this side, water being an issue that I've heard come up in this valley and things like that in Canada and everything else, those overhead drippers there, they're using 80% by studies more water than what a drip irrigation will use. Right, that is huge. You've got big areas of agricultural land using overhead watering systems and you convert them all to drip, you've just saved a lot of water that could be used for something else like human consumption. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, what about and also drips gives you flexibility, you can do it at night.